Hello and welcome to Cutting to the Ball in the post truth Apocalypse Quarantine Edition. I'm Ben, and as always, I'm joined by Gaz. Hello! And Mike. Hello! This week, we're going to talk about the Highgate Vampire. Vampire! Vampire! Well, thanks for doing returning listeners. Yep. And then we'll do some weird news, and then we'll crack on with the main cut and thrust. And before we do that, can I... Can we just say that um, we stand in solidarity with our black brothers and sisters that are fighting oppression and racism and police brutality? Yeah. And we, we metaphorically take the knee with them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, man. Just, yeah, but stop burning like suburbs where poor people live. That'd be nice. Stop burning stuff. Well, Ben, it's centuries of oppression, mate. It boils over. It does. And I, stand I ain't, go- ain't going to condemn them. We, we don't know what they're going through. I see in uh, so in Bristol today there was a, a protest and they tore down a, a slave owner's statue. And threw Good. It Good. I'm up for that. Could have recycled. Didn't have the money for the bronze. I've probably told this story before, but Liverpool, I went to university there, it's practically a slave city. And all the streets are named after slave owners, or a lot of them are. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it's still prominent, I guess. Of course it is, mate, it's systemic. Okay. Do you want to thank some new and returning listeners, Mike? Okay. Wimbledon, UK. Milan, Italy. Tallinn, Estonia, Bramshire, Germany, Lille, France, Brisbane, Australia, Vancouver, Canada, Chernovitsi, Ukraine. Wow. Kansas City, Missouri, Glasgow, UK, Winterville, North Carolina, and the top three, Sydney, Australia, Shady Nasty, New York, and Niles, Michigan. Hey. Wow. Thanks very much. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. So um, we'll do some weird news. This will take us 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we'll crack on with the main cut and thrust of today's topic. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. So, first one. Anonymous hack Chicago police radios to play NWA's Fuck the Police. Best news of the week. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's funny. Notorious hacker group Anonymous hacked into Chicago Police Department radios and played NWA's Fuck the Police down the line, according to online reports. It might not have happened. Well... The move comes after the group announced their return to social media on Saturday, May the 30th, in line with global protests over the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis last week. Hang on. Which group? The NWA or Anonymous? No, I believe that it's the um, group Anonymous who've returned, apparently, like an avenging angel from the heavens. (laughs) They have returned. I didn't know they'd gone away, to be fair. Oh, wow. Announcing their intention to target the police departments of Minneapolis and Chicago, Anonymous tweeted, We stand in solidarity with the protesters and revolutionaries fighting the U.S. oligarchy, fighting the injustice of a massively corrupt racist system that has carried on for generations. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Smash the system. They added that the police can't restrain themselves and are shooting reporters, kicking protesters, punching protests and engaging in violence. How can anyone expect the people to restrain themselves? People are done being brutalised and murdered. Well said. Posts online then showed footage of the Chicago PD's radio frequencies being interrupted by a rendition of NWA's 1988 seminal track, Fuck the Police. The police. They did do it, so yeah. That's nice, I suppose. Yeah, it's symbolic. It's a good song. Yep, I'm all for it. All right, should we do the next one then? 
Okie doke. Bloke can't sleep as unwanted pizzas keep arriving at door for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Yeah. 24-7? For nearly a decade, pizzas, kebabs and other takeaway treats have been turning up at Jean van Landenheim's door, sometimes as many as 14 at a time, but he's never ordered one. <laughs> well, either he's lying or someones he's got a secret admirer. Could be. The 65-year-old explained that nine years ago his doorbell rang. Suddenly, a pizza delivery man handed me a whole load of pizzas. I hadn't ordered anything. He assumed it was a simple delivery mix-up at first. He told Het Lasten Noise. But from that day to this, the torrent of takeaways hasn't stopped. He says that the deliveries come from a wide variety of nearby fast food outlets. Is he moaning, though? I mean... I wouldn't mind if 20 pizzas turned up. I mean, I'd be fat. I'd be very fat. But it all depends whether they're prepaid or not. I was going to say, is he charged for these pizzas or not? Oh, yeah. I'm guessing they're not prepaid. You've got to pay on delivery. Otherwise, he'd just take them, wouldn't he? And he wouldn't complain. <laughs> Free pizza. <laughs> Maybe he's become right. lactose intolerant from cheese overdoses. Uh. I mean, I don't see his problem. If he's not paying for them, then he's just not moaning. I think we're assuming that he has to pay for them. Well, in that case, he should be bankrupt. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. No, or a gift pizza. (laughs) Yeah, but if he has to pay for them... Then he's fucked. And he's getting pizzas deliveries every every day for nine years. It might get a bit annoying after a while. I don't know, but the one day it wouldn't happen, he might be really fancy some pizza. (laughs) Change your house number or something by deed poll. <laughs> he says, I cannot sleep anymore. I start shaking every time I hear a scooter on the street. I live in, <laughs> I live in fear that someone will come to drop off hot pizzas yet again. <laughs> oh, no. It's <laughs> no way to live, man. It's just being terrorised by fast food. <laughs> sooner or later he says he will track down the culprit it's been nine years <laughs> <laughs> he's got a very busy schedule and when he does he warns it will not be their best day he's Whoa. a shit detective <laughs> <laughs> he's no Columbo is he no <laughs> I'm going to put a twist on this. Maybe he's got multiple personality disorder and another personality is ordering the pizzas. Nah, could be. He just doesn't remember. He doesn't remember it. Could be. Yeah. Pranking himself. <laughs> Pranking himself. Or oh, the other half of him is like a, a, mutant, a teenage mutant ninja turtle. His other personality. <laughs> and he just can't stop eating pizza. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> they have. You know, your other personality hasn't got ne- hasn't necessarily got to be human. I mean, imagine the pranker. <laughs> He's had this going for nine years. <laughs> <laughs> That's some dedication. <laughs> it's, it certainly is. And what I'm puzzled about is that the fast food companies are still delivering to the address. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's ridiculous. He's like, hey, oh... Oh man, I went to that house the other day with that old bloke. He keeps saying he's not ordered anything, but you know, 20 pizzas, you know, it's a lot of pizza, it is. And then, you know, every day they're cooking 20 pizzas to take to this fucking guy's house. He turns them away at the door every time. Just don't deliver there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a lot of effort. Or phone up to, or to reconfirm the order. Yeah. <laughs> take a contact number. I call bullshit on this story. Or is it happening in like. Like the third world. Is it happening in like the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> it's in Flanders. It's in France. Is or that Belgium? Belgium, Belgium Bel- I think. Well, that explains it. About 300 years behind. <laughs> <laughs> They're not that bad. No, it's just a bit of casual racism, Ben. Just, just shits and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing's frowned upon these days and I insist on keeping it alive <laughs> uh, I don't know 
anything about Belgium. It's just one of them countries that you never think about. In the name of Bernard Manning. Um. <laughs> Your personal idol? Yeah, one of many. Comedy idol? Keeping his candle burning. One of many. He was actually very funny, if you give him a chance. <laughs> Just a little dated now, though, isn't it? Well. <laughs> I mean, it was dated when I was a kid. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> but he's better than Chubby Brown. I used to go much Chubby Brown. Yeah, we know. Yeah. No, does. <laughs> I'm very proud of this. Right, is there any more to that story? No, I think that's it. Right, should we do the third and final one? Third and final. And finally. Elvis dead, aged 85. Wow, I thought he died a lot. When did Elvis supposedly die? In the 70s? Uh, 1977 he died, the year punk rock was born. Oh, I wonder if he was reincarnated into the spirit of punk. Eh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll, has died from coronavirus complications, <laughs> aged 85. Huh. Elvis passed away quietly in an isolation unit at the Journey's End Senior Living Complex, just five miles from his beloved Graceland's mansion near Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, imagine king... if he'd been living there the entire time and yeah. not twigged. <laughs> I think that's what it's insinuating. The king moved to the home in 2006 following many years living in hiding after he had sensationally faked his own death in August on August 16th, 1977. The home's manager, Buck Smitherson, said last night, for 14 years we've been home to the biggest secret in the world. Now that he's gone, we're free to say that Elvis Presley lived out his final years here at Journey's End Senior Living Complex. As a kind of tribute to the king, we produce some commemorative Elvis Lives Here coffee mugs and T-shirts, which are available via mail order. And if anyone would like to visit to pay tribute to Elvis and to see his room, we are offering an exclusive Elvis experience at just fifty-nine ninety-nine. Booking is available on our website. Elvis was a gentleman, a real southern gentleman, and everyone here will miss him. He insisted that everyone called him Aaron, his second name, because, as he said to uh, me many, many times, Elvis is dead. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, we done respected his wishes right to the very end. We done respected his wishes right to the very end. Book also revealed that Elvis was planning one last show in Vegas <laughs> when he felt <laughs> ill. He said Kenny Rogers was one of the few in the industry who knew for sure that Elvis was still alive. <laughs> he would come and visit. The pair would sit up late talking about the old days. And they got into their heads they'd do a show together. One last outing in Vegas. Oh, fuck it. We get the gist. Come on. <laughs> Elvis died of corona, man. <laughs> I love that one last one last show in Vegas. Wow. Fucking up. They wheel him on like Father Jack with a cigarette in his, <laughs> in his hand. What a uh, show that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he can barely walk, but he can still shovel that burger in his mouth. One thing that never left Elvis, though, even when he got bloated and fat and ugly and all that, the voice never left him, man. He could still sing like a fucking demon right up to the end. So maybe he'd come back 88 and still fucking blow you away with his voice. But yeah, he'd be in a wheelchair. You know, the old hips wouldn't be doing much. He's <laughs> 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 had artificial ones. <laughs> and, uh, you, what's the name of the, the, the Journey's End Retirement Living Complex? That sounds a terrible place to end up. Five miles from Graceland, baby. Yeah, it's he's, called Journey's End. He's been, end. And he's been there for 40 years. I'm willing to predict that it's better than any care home any three of us are going to end up in. Yeah. I was just I thought I was going to get thrown in a ditch. Well. Probably, live in, I, live I in a want, shed somewhere. I, that was, I that didn't was, want to bring you down, man. <laughs> well, he, I says, think, he says we're going to make old age. Exactly. <laughs> the way things are going. Things are against us, man. I think that concludes the news. Anyway, on that happy fucking note. <laughs> <laughs> so is it the face of the alien invasion in July, isn't it? Something uh, like Pandemic again later in the year, yeah? Oh, and then, f- oh we're going to be fine. And then <laughs> a, me- a comet will hit us in December. 
We might be okay. Maybe. Ah, we'll uh, I don't know. Oh, right, come on. Let's not get all fucking misery. Let's do the fucking uh, subject and have fun. Vampire? Yeah, him. <laughs> so, let's go on to the Highgate Vampire and the Hunters, who are two quite interesting characters as well. I don't know how much you guys looked into them. Yeah, a bit, yeah. Yeah? Mr. Manchester. Bishop Manchester. Bishop Manchester. Yeah, Ooh. well, he claims to be a bishop in this. It's called the Old Catholic Church, and it was like a breakaway sect, but there's re- really anyone in it, and it's not recognised, but he just did. claims he's a bishop. <laughs> He, and I just think he likes to go around dressed as a priest, to be fair. Strange chap. Um, but very much up for vampire slaying. In fact, he does still travel with a stake and hammer and holy water. His vam- vampire slaying kit. That's it. You never know when you'll bump into one in Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Why do you keep saying vampire? It's a bit more traditional, and uh, they both called it a vampire. Is this, one like, just, is this one of them wanky things where you're like, <laughs> actually, it's flavor age. <laughs> <laughs> no. Vampire. No. I've never heard another human fucking being on the face of this fucking earth pronounce it vampire. Well, clearly you never watched the videos about these two guys because they were calling it a vampire. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's a bishop, guys. He knows what he's on about. Uh, yeah. Moving on. He's moving Britain's, on. Uh, Britain's gentleman. Britain's um, leading vampire killer. Fuck. Please say vampire, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to fucking God. <laughs> well, if you insist... Vampire! Fucking hell. I was thinking, see, if you, you're just the, pointing and shouting, Vampire! Just, just <laughs> pronounce it however you want to, it's fine. <laughs> Please continue. So, the Highgate Vampire did a 1970s Nosferatu stalk a London cemetery. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, a series of bizarre events occurred in and around Highgate Cemetery in London. A number of sightings of phantoms and spectres, particularly of a tall, dark-cloaked entity with burning eyes, led to the speculation the capital had acquired its very own vampire. Highgate Cemetery is a very high-end cemetery, if you think in such terms like that. It's walled, there's crypts, there's famous people there. Karl Marx is buried in Highgate Cemetery. Ooh. There's um, quite a few, to be fair, famous people. By this point, it's incredibly overrun, uh, overgrown, overrun with everything. Overrun with vampires? Overrun with vampires, (laughs) clearly. Or certainly a vampire. Yeah, so reports soon came from Highgate of tombs being broken into. Graves and bodies were desecrated and black magic rituals allegedly performed. Vampire hunters claimed to have broken open coffins and plunged stakes into and even burned the corpses of the undead. Newspapers obsessed over these strange occurrences. TV programmes are made about a supposed nest of vampires in Highgate Cemetery, and those promising to root out this ancient evil were interviewed. I love it. (laughs) On Friday the 13th, March 1970, hundreds of would-be vampire hunters invaded the Victorian graveyard and engaged in a search for what was known as the Highgate Vampire. But did any sort of vampire exist? Who were those self-proclaimed vampire hunters, some of whom would dedicate years to understanding the phenomenon and to hunting the vampire down? And how could a late 20th century city be gripped by a panic more at home in the pages of a Victorian Gothic novel. But was it gripped by panic? People in Highgate were certainly talking about it. It was making the local paper. They made a big deal of it. Hundreds of people are showing up. It says something. 
yeah, that people were thick as fuck the back then. He was thick as <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Yeah, but they're still thick as fuck now. I know you're thick as fuck, but I mean... <laughs> I was going to say, maybe they're just showing up because they don't want to see their graveyard vandalised. Nothing to do with fucking vampires. They're turning up with stakes and burning torches. What, well, all of them? And Burgers. Is... Burgers? Stakes. No, uh, wooden stakes. Hammers, uh, presumably. Oh. So, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just not that impressed. <laughs> How you get, st- hang on, so, what, what are you going to say? Stakes, wooden stakes. Wooden wow. stakes. Well, that's how you oh. kill a vampire. Fuck. Well, vampires, watch out, man. <laughs> Highgate Cemetery was far more ramshackle than it is now. Once one of London's most fashionable burial grounds, the graveyard was, by the 1960s, overgrown and neglected. Graffiti was scrawled across headstones. Vandals had pulled doors off vaults. Cracks and holes in tombs offered glimpses of coffins and, in some cases, bodies. It's not surprising the dilapidated grandeur of this cemetery with its ivy-entwined Gothic monuments would generate legends of hauntings and sinister creatures and draw those with an interest in the occult and macabre. Wow. It's a very nice graveyard. Architecture's very nice, very gothic. It is your stereotypical Scooby-Doo graveyard. <laughs> is that your scientific evidence? <laughs> no. It's a bit... It's like Scooby-Doo! <laughs> 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 You pesky vampire hunters. <laughs> now, one of the... So you go on. For that pesky lack of evidence. Hang on. We, I haven't even began the tale of proper yet. Fucking hell, I'm going to get comfy. <laughs> <laughs> According to David Ferrant, a young local man with a passion for the paranormal, the first murmurings about a strange being began in late 1969. Ferrant claimed that he'd spoke to two people, an old lady who'd been out walking her dog, and a middle-aged accountant who told similar stories about what they'd seen in the cemetery. The old lady had been walking down Swain's Lane, a road running through the graveyard, when she saw a tall, dark figure with glaring eyes that seemed to be floating towards her. She felt the air turn icy cold. The accountant had got lost in the vast cemetery, and a bell started to clang, and he walked towards the sound, hoping it might guide him out of the necropolis. Instead, as the bell tolled, he became aware of something behind him and noticed the temperature plummeting. He turned around to see a tall, dark figure that stared at him intensely before it vanished. Wow. So tall, dark, gaunt figures, Nosferatu-like. Goths. <laughs> <laughs> Could be goths. Uh, it's a typical goth. <laughs> Cheer up, Goth. <laughs> they can't. It's just a genuine message I was putting out there to the Goths of the world. Hashtag Cheer up, Goth. Yeah, smile, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> I actually well, think... she could be in Korea, you fucking Marilyn Manson t-shirt wearing skateboard loving bastard. <laughs> you sound, you sound like a, you've aged rapidly saying that sentence, girls. Yeah, you know full well I used to hang around with the original Marilyn Manson t-shirt wearing skateboarding bastards. But now I'm nearly 40 and there's like these reproduction ones. Have you seen them? They're about 17. 17? I've got all northern. 17 (laughs) with a skateboard and a fucking corn t-shirt. Who are they? Get off me, <laughs> they weren't even there, were they, guys? They weren't there from the I, start of it. I've, I've seen like 15 year olds in Oasis t shirts. You, you fucking don't. It. You wouldn't even know Liam from Noel, you little bastard. <laughs> you weren't even <laughs> born when they released their first album. You were fucking born, you twat. Fucking. Trannies. I actually. Trannies. Eh? Who said trannies? Nah. <laughs> no one said trannies. <laughs> you what? Right, I'm doing a rant. No, it's a joke. Please, please go back to the fucking in a fade up killer, man. <laughs> yeah, please, please, Ben. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to hear his rant. <laughs> no, 
There is no run. There is no run. <laughs> I think that this is Jimmy Savile. So you Intrigued. think it was Jimmy Savile? I think it was Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Someone tall, skinny, gaunt-looking fucker hanging around the cemetery at night. Well, he does look like the crib keeper from the Tales from the Crib. Glass... Did he have a glass eye for a necklace? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's where he got the glass eye from. I'm a Highgate Cemetery. Fucking hell. <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> I mean, the bodies are exposed. It's run down. He can get into the coffins. Oh, no. He's school for fucked car marks. Jim will bite it for you. <laughs> Fucking hell. Anyway, let's move on with the tale. Intrigued, Ferrant decided to investigate by spending a night in the graveyard. He said, at the first I suspected it might just be an animal or someone dressed up or messing about because of all these stories about vampires are in the news. But around midnight, I caught sight of a figure about seven feet tall that appeared to be floating just above the ground. I saw its face and two points of intense red light. The area turned cold as if I'd stepped into a refrigerator. The figure seemed to be draining me of energy, and I felt <laughs> I was losing control of my normal faculties. It felt like a vivid dream, like I wanted to wake up but couldn't. When he says faculties, does that mean he pissed himself? Uh, it's mental faculties, doesn't it? Yeah, um, I think so. Well, if I, think bo- I think he's saying bodily functions. Well, yeah, that's what he would have said. It bodily functions well, is different from Mr. pissing himself. Is- and your faculties and your bodily functions are two different things. Yeah, but I think he, he wouldn't say if he pissed himself, so he just said faculties. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, carry on with what he says. Realising I was under intense psychic attack, repeated mentally a cabalistic incantation used to repel evil forces. Oh, that was lucky then. <laughs> it disappeared, but I decided the reports were true. It's a good job he knows Wicker. That's true. And Kabbalistic incantations. This guy's Doctor Strange. Nah. In February 1970, Ferrant wrote a letter to a local newspaper, the Hampstead and Highgate Express, also known as the Ham and High, asking if anyone had seen anything similar. A number of people responded, saying they had glimpsed apparitions in Highgate Cemetery and Swains Lane. These phantoms, though, were of a variety of descriptions, including a tall man wearing a hat, a ghostly cyclist, a lady dressed in white, a face grimacing between the bars of a gate, a person wading into a pond and a pale gliding entity. There are also reports of the sounds of bells and voices calling. There was little little coherence in the types of spectres people claimed to have seen. (laughs) Wonder why. (laughs) Because, uh... Probably a ghostly so, okay. cyclist was a tall man wearing a hat could just be a bloke on his way over a fancy dress pie. A ghostly cyclist uh, just could be a man on a bike. Bollocks! <laughs> Bollocks! Um, <laughs> 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 He's just saying what everyone's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Though Ferrant had never claimed the dark figure he encountered was a vampire, uh, a young man with an interest in the supernatural, Sean Manchester, the Bishop Sean Manchester, would soon make his public his ideas about what the apparition in the graveyard might be. Oh, I can't wait for this. Now, Sean Manchester had little doubt that a genuine Nosferatu was stalking suburban North London. Manchester contacted the Hammond High, and on the 27th of February, 1970, the newspaper published an interview entitled Does a Vampire Walk in Highgate? And this is Vampire. It's about the W. What? Yeah. Vampire? <laughs> yeah. Vampire. Vampire. There's a vampire. Fuck's yeah. sake, lad. <laughs> Not <a> French, <laughs> Del <dull> boy. <laughs> You sound like fucking Del Boy over there. <laughs> Vampire! <laughs> <laughs> so, Manchester outlined a theory to explain the monster's presence. He alleged that a king vampire of the undead, that's a quote, was buried <laughs> in the graveyard. This vampire, who in life had been an aristocrat and practitioner of black magic in medieval Romania, 
had been transported to England in a coffin by his followers in the early 18th century. Had been interred on the site that would later become <laughs> Highgate Cemetery, and his followers had also purchased a house for him in London's fashionable West End. Okay, interesting hypothesis. Where's the evidence? I don't know whether this is not Sean Manchester's <laughs> theory. Oh, his no. theory. <laughs> it's just theory of some lunatic. He's a bishop, Mike. In his oh. own fucking church. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only <laughs> member of. Bishop. Bishops have never destroyed any lives with their lies, have they? <laughs> Are you telling me you can't trust a man of the cloth anymore? Of course you fucking can't. Especially not if he's touching your cloth. <laughs> the reason works. for the Highgate vampire's reappearance, Manchester said, oh, God. was that rituals Let's recently carried out by Satanists say. in the cemetery had reawakened this evil presence. Oh, those damn pesky Satanists. <laughs> reawakening <laughs> ancient vampire evil. When will they just stop messing about? <laughs> Leave the spirits alone. <laughs> Manchester claimed to have spoken to local people who'd experienced vampiric activity. A schoolgirl, Elizabeth Voyager, I think that's like an Eastern European surname. It's not, I'm not pronouncing I, it right. You reckon? <laughs> Had seen the vampire when walking down Swain's Lane. Elizabeth began having nightmares in which something evil tried to come into her bedroom. <laughs> Eventually, two wounds appeared on her neck and she started to display symptoms of anemia. Manchester and Elizabeth's boyfriend filled her room with garlic, crucifixes and holy water and her condition soon improved. So, things on her neck. Hello. Evil figures creeping into her room. Okay, but it's just hearsay, isn't it? Is there what? any photographic evidence of the bite? Have you got that? No, no, there's no photographic evidence. That's bollocks, isn't it? I don't Do you know what? It. There's a running theme with the stories. That you <laughs> <do>. <laughs> that they are exactly that. Just fucking stories, the made up ramblings of shit licking fucking lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a fan of the subjects, guys. <laughs> what are you presenting me with? <laughs> if you're going to read me a story, just so I get a good comic book or something, or a, 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 a nice little novella, something interesting. But this fucking, this is the driveling shit of fucking. <laughs> Arseholes! <laughs> You're not down for it so far. Fucking hell, are we, how far through are we this, through this? <laughs> <laughs> you got a bit, little bit more. Oh. Okay. Is it there at least some action at the end? Is there a fight scene? Uh, no, nearly. A car chase? <laughs> no. Oh, fuck me. Okay, hit me with it. Maybe this will convince me. You never know, Ben. Strong finish. <laughs> Manchester spoke to another young woman called Jacqueline who said she'd woken in the night to find something cold clutching her hand. The next morning, she noticed deep tears in the flesh where she tried to force her hand free. Jacqueline and her younger brother soon developed a fascination that kept drawing them to the more dilapidated western side of the Highgate Cemetery where Manchester sus- suspected the vampire had its lair. Wow. More people contacted him, all describing a similar tall, dark being with blazing eyes. Now, in his interview, right, surprisingly, Manchester didn't supply any proof to back up his ideas. What a surprise. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. But in a book he published in 1985 called The Highgate Vampire, Manchester does mention a foreign nobleman's coffin being bought to Highgate, so he's still lying. He's lying about lying. Did you say a book he published? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> no other fucking publishing house would touch it. Because <laughs> like it's not shy. Self published, fucking written, driveling shit. It's the equivalent of the fucking. Like the. If somebody just puked into a fucking computer. And let it regurgitate into words, utterly meaningless. Yeah, or a thousand monkeys on acid on a typewriter. 
Using her asses to type. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing like five keys at once. What the fuck, Ben? <laughs> I didn't say I believed it. Alright, well. You do, though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> there appears, however, to be some more solid evidence concerning the occult ceremonies Manchester believed were taking place in the graveyard. Not more solid evidence. More concrete evidence. <laughs> There's not been any solid evidence to boot so That's far. There's any evidence. Is there hardly... Gentlemen. All the stuff we've done for the last two, nearly three years, there's never been any evidence for. <laughs> no, there's, there's been like some... Videos yeah, yeah. And there's the same with every single story we ever tell. It's anecdotal evidence. Nah, there's more evidence on some... Like, sometimes we've done like true crime things and stuff where there's actual, like, where people have seen it happen and we've got video. This, this is a different level, man. This is like, you know... Remember that time I told you I shagged Jessica Rabbit? Yeah. <laughs> the same thing. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, but I did shag Jessica Rabbit. Fair enough. Do you want to believe that? you? I did. Fair enough. She's a drawing, so technically if I drew her and shagged it, <laughs> who's to say I didn't? <laughs> you know what? Wouldn't put it past you. Did you know there's going to be hey. another Who Framed Roger Rabbit too? Yeah, is there? Apparently, yeah. No, I've done it. I'll fuck it up. <laughs> Who fucked Jessica Rabbit? <laughs> me, me. <laughs> anyway, the Woo. more solid evidence concerning the occult ceremonies Manchester believe were taking place in the graveyard. The rant said that in Highgate Cemetery. He often found the discarded remains of Satanist rituals, stubs of black candles, satanic markings on the floors of tombs, and in one small chapel-like tomb, an inverted pentagram had been drawn on the floor. Well, you did say that Satanists were hanging about in the churchyard, so I'd expect that. Well, yes, but they're saying that the activities of the Satanists have woken the long dormant presence. Yeah, well, that's the difference between me and him, isn't it? Well, here... <laughs> Him and every other sane person in the world, you know, just because <laughs> Satanists are doing this shit doesn't mean they're actually invoking some kind of evil spirit. I mean, it's just a load of bollocks, isn't it? Well, they also are just, you know, desecrating bodies and graves too, remember? Which is against the law. It's illegal, even though the police knew it was going on. So, yes. Well, as it continues on, the story in an article published in March 1970 in the Hampstead and Highgate Express, Ferrant said he'd found dead foxes in the cemetery but couldn't work out how they died. Manchester claimed he'd also seen the foxes and suggested the vampire had been using them as a food source. And then soon the story spiralled out where it was alleged the animals had been found drained of blood with their throats ripped open. Yeah, by the foxes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no blood. Yeah, they have their throats ripped open. What's going to happen? The blood's going to seep out, isn't it? Well, yes. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> but there'd still be some blood left in the body. Well, yeah, of course, but how do they know that no, there's no blood in the body at all? I don't believe that. Well, this is what they're saying. That's how the story went. Well, story, exactly, yeah. Go on. Reports of the Highgate vampire soon reached national and even international media. Articles appeared in the national press, television programmes were made, and even the uh, and Reuters featured it. On their uh, channel. Must be true then. Yeah, because be. the, uh, the news never lies. No, of course they don't. Now, both of these guys have, Ferrant and Manchester, have two very different approaches to what they want to do with this vampiric presence that's trotting around the churchyard and draining the life of foxes. Ferrant, he wants to communicate with it psychically with a group of his followers. And, you know, put the soul to rest. You know? Ask it to leave. <laughs> that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Genuinely. Could you please leave this area? <laughs> Using I'm sick his... of all the dead foxes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and Manchester just wants to stake the fucker through the heart. 
That's that's all he cares about. Fair enough. <laughs> Chillingly, on the night of Halloween 1968, an act of desecration was discovered in a nearby Tottenham Park ceremony cemetery um, where flowers had been taken from graves and arranged in circles with arrows pointing to a new grave, which was uncovered. A stake had been driven through the coffin lid and into the heart of the corpse. As interest in the Highgate vampire mounted, a rivalry grew up between David Ferrant and Shaw Manchester, with each belittling the other's skills as an exorcist and stating that they would be the one to expel the spectre lurking in Highgate. And they did have a huge rivalry to the point where they were going to fight a magical duel. (laughs) Vampire, you wouldn't know a vampire if it came up and slapped its testicles upon your chin, you filthy (laughs) rotten bastard. I've never been so offended in all my life. I challenge you to a magical showdown. (laughs) I'll see you there bitch (laughs) genuinely they would obviously be competing to kill this their undead vampire friend and they were going to actually have a duel on Parliament Hill in Hampstead which was scheduled for April 13th 1973 they were going to fight with swords and magic I said scheduled for what (laughs) for Yeah, swords and magic. Mm, okay, well, wow. like He Man. Yeah. Okay, what and happened? The, he won. Sadly, Mike, the police found about, out about it and told them to pack it in. Bastards. Pigs. Always ruining Because him. literally, flyers started to appear in London Underground <laughs> stations advertising the magical jewel. Of course uh, they did. Magic and swords versus bare hands. Street fight. London Ducks. <laughs> Parliament Hill. Parliament Hill, so yeah. Be there or be square in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> on the evening of Friday, 13th of March, 1970, a programme aired on ITV featuring Ferrant, Manchester and others claiming to have seen supernatural figures around Highgate. The programme even included live outside reporting from Highgate Cemetery. And within two hours of the programme being shown, hundreds of would-be vampire hunters began arriving in Highgate. They surged over the locked walls and gates, uh, locked gates and walls of the necropolis, despite the efforts of the police officers to stop them. The vampire hunters, many armed with weapons, searched frantically among the Victorian tombs. Those interviewed at the scene appeared to genuinely believe in the vampire and saying they were determined to find this monster and put an end to its diabolical actions. The mob didn't um, catch any vampires that night, but they did insist some of them insisted <laughs> they'd glimpse the tall, dark figure. Oh, have they, ever, have they ever caught any, Ben? Ever? Any no. time? The shit, then, aren't they, or they don't exist? Yeah. Shit is vampire hunter ever. He's been going since 1970 and he's not caught one. Isn't I it? give up, mate. <laughs> Imagine years. a plumber who never fixed a fucking leak in 50 years. <laughs> He's not just, well, for he can't tired and... a plumber. If you've never done any plumbing, you're not a fucking <laughs> plumber. <laughs> yeah, it's like me, I call myself a writer, but I've, I've never actually finished writing anything. <laughs> Stay <Same> here. <laughs> <sighs> fucking hell. Do you need me to get off the fence at the end and tell you what I really think? Yeah, I'd like that. All right. <laughs> on that Friday the 13th, as the amateur vampire hunters swarmed over the cemetery, Manchester and some companions made their way to the entrance of one particular catacomb. He claimed he'd been previously led there by a sleepwalking girl who appeared to have been bothered by the Highgate vampire and exhibiting symptoms similar to the previous two girls. <laughs> the, uh, bites that, on the neck. Vamp- that vampire is bothering me. <laughs> I've been bothered <laughs> by a vampire. Ooh. <laughs> Show me on the door when a vampire touched you. <laughs> well, on the neck, mate, what do you think? <laughs> Please stop bothering me. <laughs> I am going to bother the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> they found themselves so unable to open the door to this tomb down the catacomb. They used a rope to climb down through a window where they found themselves in a vault with several coffins, one of which, a sinister-looking casket, 
made of nearly black wood did not seem to fit. And that's apparently true. These tombs have a list of uh, how many coffins are in there and who is in there. And there was an extra coffin, which was the black one. There was no nameplate on it. Must be vampire. <laughs> must be a vampire. Oh, must be supernatural. Yeah, no nameplate. Must be supernatural beings. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have a nameplate. <laughs> Evidence. Yeah, because humans never make administrative errors, do they? Never. No. No. I didn't spell wrong because my fucking dad's a mong. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tony fill the fucking thing in wrong and <laughs> <laughs> they performed an exorcism with holy water and garlic and sprinkled salt around in some kind of protected oh uh... what a bunch of absolute <laughs> fucking wankers <laughs> <laughs> that's supposed to even fucking do yeah. stupid <laughs> shitted fucking brain dead twat bastard cunt weasels fucking piss weasels Absolutely. I, am, I almost wish there was a fucking vampire to take these cunts out. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue, Ben. Tell me more about how they burnt pubes in a fucking thistle <laughs> with a sprinkle of ladybird wings. Well, OK. A few months later, on August the 1st, the charred, decapitated remains of a woman were found near the catacomb. The police suspected this mutilated corpse had been used in a black magic ritual. Ooh. Now, after this, Ferrant and Manchester seemed to become more active. Ferrant was apprehended by the police in the churchyard next to the cemetery one night, clutching a crucifix and a wooden stake. He was arrested, but the case against him collapsed when he came to court. Why? Because he's there's no it's it's no well, he's, yeah I've got a crucifix and a wooden stake. He didn't have his fuck out, Mike. I haven't done anything with him, have I? No. Uh, to be fair, that even getting to court seems unlikely. Yeah. Well, it was the old days, wasn't it? True. Now, uh, Manchester's were led to a different vault by a female psychic helper. After oh. forcing open the doors, they found a black coffin similar to the one that they'd previously seen in the catacombs. Manchester suspecting it had been moved by black magic devotees. <laughs> uh, and not just painted by a twat. No. <laughs> it was only discovered in that putrid... This is Manchester speaking. In that putrid chamber of that tomb in August 1970, what we did and looked upon the horrific countenance of what was inside. Manchester said that we had absolute confirmation of what we were dealing with. Manchester wanted to drive a stake through the body, but a member of his entourage persuaded him not to, as interfering with the remains was a crime in England. Instead, the group performed a ritual that used seven crucifixes, four white candles and seven cups of holy water in a ceremony carried out by four men and a woman to banish a spirit uh, of evil presence using the Latin formula. Oh, God. They just exorcised again. Manchester says the cemetery officials then bricked up the vault with a crucifix and holy water left inside. Wow. So they're the heroes. They saved the day. They saved us from this vampire. They're literally the Ghostbusters of this story. They are. Except not as Get fun. Female Ghostbusters from that shit one that no one likes. Hmm. <laughs> Ferrant and his group were also making efforts to deal with a strange presence. They decided to try and communicate with the entity and discover its purpose. In Highgate Cemetery, they conducted rituals using two circles uh, for protection, I presume, incense, candles and a medium. The first time they tried this, the press interrupted them. A year later, according to Ferrant, another attempt saw the entity clasping the medium by the throat. They had to break the circle, the area turned cold. She felt she was being enveloped by blackness as if something was trying to strangle her. <laughs> Is that a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> he was now convinced the entity was malignant. After hearing of incidents in which a sinister force had pushed people over in Swain's lanes, he did more research. He came up with a theory that the being wasn't a vampire at all, but an evil presence that travelled along a ley line. Oh, fuck. Bollocks! <laughs> And they're throwing ley lines into the mix. Yeah. 
ley lines. I'm sure Manchester is still going in late in his story. Despite the ceremony that he did in the, in the tomb, any relief was short-lived. Manchester said strange occurrences failed to cease and more horrifying incidents ended any hope that we climbed into disturbance with a mere spoken exorcism rite. Further vampiric outrages were to follow. Oh, they fucked up then, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, three years later, Manchester claims he and his associates discovered the same ominous black casket in the cellars of an abandoned and suitably gothic mansion on the borders of Highgate and Crouch End. Fucking hell, I can't, I can't, I can't. Ah, coughing on the fucking face of the earth, you fucking silly bastard. Have you ever watched an Undertaker match? <laughs> I was going to say, that coughing gets about more than I do. <laughs> Got a better social life than me. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you were in a mansion, Mike? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just see if I can get to know it. It might invite me to some parties. <laughs> Don't get your hopes up. <laughs> Manchester suspected the coffin had been moved there to avoid all the attention the media and enthusiastic vampire hunters had focused on Highgate Cemetery. Manchester's group dragged the coffin out of the basement, up the stairs and into the grounds of the mansion. Manchester said dawn was right about to break starting to send spears of bright illumination onto the macabre spectacle below. When the lid was removed, we beheld the same thing we'd seen in August 1970. The uh, Undertaker! <laughs> <laughs> Our quarry this time looked even more exaggerated, even more distorted than I remembered it, far worse than even that time in the Highgate vault. Its burning <laughs> fierce eyes under the many furrowed brow were staring. Yellow at the edges with blood red centers, unlike anything imaginable. The mouth was set in a cruel expression, the lips drawn back. Manchester drove a stake into the Highgate vampire. With a mighty blow, a sharpened shaft of wood impaled the creature's heart. We witnessed the body shell cave in and quickly turn filthy brown, and that itself soon became a sluggish flow of inhuman slime and viscera in the bottom of the casket. Wow. Hasn't he just committed a crime? Yes, he has. And he's admitted to it? Yes, he has. What yeah. No, it's not a crime, Mike. It's, no, no, it's all fucking <laughs> anger. <laughs> well, Sean Manchester actually gets taken to court over this. Oh, shit. After they staked the body, they burnt the casket and what was left of the body... Some bones need to be grown down and cast to the four corners or four winds of the earth. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Fucking Highlander shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Manchester was jailed. Oh, sorry, Ferrand was jailed after being convicted of interfering with remains and vandalising memorials in Highgate ceremony. Yeah, interfering with remains just like Savile. Mm. Yeah. Not a nice man. That is then the tale of the Highgate Cemetery. So, what do you think, Mike? <laughs> I'll let you answer first, Gaz. Hmm. Well, I think there could be some truth to it, but there also could be bananas growing from the arse of a giant elephant galloping upon the moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about as believable, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah. Well, I think I've said my piece. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not down for the uh, vampire, Highgate Cemetery vampire then? No, it's a massive bag of shit. No. Oh. I can care. Oh. I mean... Wholeheartedly. I mean, I think uh, vampires are just a sort of construct of, of lit, liter, literary, a literary device from sort of Lord Byron and that sort of thing. They're not like actual real, you know, anyone who thinks they're real is like a driveling simpleton. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, no evidence I, at all. No evidence. There's, not, there's never any evidence for anything Just we talk about. Just some dead foxes and that was it. You know, there's, there's never any evidence for anything we talk about. Yes, there is. Listen. Well, well, the true crime. Vampires. Ben, Ben. Sorry to interrupt, guys, but but I, I think vampires were were created from a need to scare like like folk 
uneducated folk into God worship at a time when scientific discovery was um, strongly emerging and forcing people to question their beliefs. So they needed a way to like, sort of scare them back into the sort of, you know, religious field right, with demons like vampires and that sort of wank. Vampire mythologies in every single human culture goes back a long, long way. Well, of course, humanity's always been obsessed. Yeah, with but so do helicopters. No, vampires go back longer than helicopters. No, they don't. They're in a fucking pyramid. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you on about? The Egyptians believed in vampires too. Yeah, I'm sure every civilization did. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're real, though, does it? Well, right. no, of course it doesn't. I'm just saying that it's... Right. Uh... I'll tell you a story, shall I? Do you Come think on. that if vampires were real, do you think they'd have some sort of, like, magical sort of, like, power over their lives? Like, they'd be in positions of power and, um, you know, yeah? They'd be doing well for themselves, wouldn't they, vampires? Yeah, yeah if, they're, if they're immortal, they'd, they'd be rich, you, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, you'd think. Well, I met a vampire. His name was Gangrel. You might remember him. Oh, the wrestler? Yeah, he used to wrestle for the WWE. Do you know how I met him? It wasn't at a WWE show, Ben. It was at a show at the Oak and Gates Town Hall, right? And he still has his real teeth because he hasn't got like fake teeth that he puts in. He actually had, he's got vampire fangs fully all the time in his head. I met him after the show. It cost five pounds to have a photo with him, right? There he was, all fat and sweaty and (laughs) out of shape and not on television in America earning three figures a week anymore, uh, four figures a week anymore right he was at Oaken Gates Town Hall except in the fiver to have a picture of a drunk man from Telford he's going I can't fucking believe it in my town (laughs) and he's a real vampire and teeth are real but why has his career gone to shit if he had if he had supernatural powers is what I'm saying he wouldn't be resting (laughs) at Oaken Gates Town Hall would he but he was cool when he used to spit the blood on the crowd. But then with the days, if he did that now in 2020, he'd be fucking hung, drawn and quartered, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've met a vampire is what I'm saying. It cost five pounds to have a picture with him. <laughs> did he show up in the picture? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> exactly. So it's all bollocks. He's there. I can prove it. It's on Facebook. I'll send it here. You've got to post. When we post this next week, you've got to attach the picture of me with sweaty fat post-match gangrel at Oak and Gates Town Hall <laughs> with his teeth. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, what? I met him. Yeah, but imagine he was a real vampire. And you were yeah. five pound for a picture and he's just a picture of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> <But I> can't. <laughs> <laughs> he gets booked. <laughs> <laughs> you stood there like with your arm, you're like thumbs up, and there's no one there. <laughs> you, so you make it like, yeah, I met Gangrel, did Jim? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah what did you do? Did he? Oh yeah, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> what, what a rip off. Speak, I'm gonna find the picture of me and Gangrel and send it to you boys. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting some reaction from that picture I sent you last night. No, <laughs> no, did because why the fuck would I? Why? I've had to delete it off my phone as well, because every time I go to my fucking camera roll, there, there it fucking is. I <laughs> <laughs> saw. <laughs> For the listener, do you want to explain what the picture was? Um, I was sent a picture of a naked Donald Trump being spray tanned, but how genuine it is, I don't know. Probably not at all. But still, I just thought I'd send it to Gaz and Mike for a reaction. <laughs> bastard yeah well you've got a reaction silence and then he about half an hour later he messages me absolutely incredulous like what no reaction right of course no reaction why the fuck would i want to talk about that i didn't want to see it i don't discuss it with you what the fuck? <laughs> fucking hell what did you expect me to say i don't know just outrage thank you yeah, told him. Stay up for time. Anyway, I've just sent you a picture of me and an actual living vampire. All right. Who, uh, you know, didn't obviously have much power because he fucking. I've that picture is in the lobby of Oaken Gates Hall. Look at that palm tree, that shit tree in the background. <laughs> you drank piss sweet lager in there where Gangrel is. Oh, what a vampire! So powerful. Mm. 
And I'm yeah. real hard, eh? He had them teeth put in, didn't he? Cosmetically. <laughs> yeah. Cool, though. Good investment, though. While he had the WWE money, he actually used it for something that he's probably, I mean, I guess paying rent just about with. No. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, enough to sleep in a car that he's hired anyway. <laughs> in Oaken Gates. In Oaken Gates. Oh, God, what a brave bastard. <laughs> uh, quite. He's travelled all over the States. He's been, he is genuinely huge. You can't tell from the picture he's on his knees, kind of. Uh, he's massive, like freakishly large. But anyway, that's I've derailed us all. Mike, Ben, what the fuck is going on with the Highgate Vampire Cemetery Man? Jimmy Savile. Nah. Okay. Do the I dates, genuinely think do it's Jimmy dates Savile. Work out? Do the dates. Yeah, I'm the dates, but I will. Fuck, it could be. Yeah, you're right, Mike. You know, but I, that's my theory. Obviously, I don't believe in vampires, but I just thought it was an, an entertaining tale. A oh. tale, it certainly is. A tale of A bullshit. A tale as old as time. I mean, some people believe it, some people don't. That's the beauty of these things. Vampires are all shy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's end the show on some fucked up facts. Jingle, please. Oh, facts, 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 fucked up facts, facts, fucked up facts. Love this. <laughs> One day average... we'll do that in sequence. <laughs> <laughs> The average British person only complains three times a day. I refuse to believe that. I'm, I'm above <laughs> average. Well above average. Oh, fucking hell, me too. I'm a professional driver, for fuck's sake. I'm a professional complainer. <laughs> Who fucking said Can you get a fucking bus through there? Who taught you to fucking drive? Yeah. Fuck it out. Who your fucking eyes painted on your dad? Fucking God. <laughs> Is that what you were doing when I had that conversation with you and you replied? You replied, Ben, I'm trying to drive a, a van through Birmingham. I've never thought about it. Yeah, you you tried to you were questioning me on which part of the human body I would use to make a tobacco pouch yeah. because the Nazis used testicles of dead Jews. No, yeah, this one guy had, a, had this one made of a scrotum. I was trying to drive very complicated fucking roundabouts. <laughs> you don't have to answer. I did answer appropriately. Like fucking, can I just like maybe talk about this when I'm fucking not doing something that's dangerous and important? <laughs> Fucking hell. You tell you've been on lockdown, you've fucking got the luxury of being able to just fucking think what you want when you want, you bastard. <laughs> and the worrying thing is, you're you're thinking about scrotum fucking... Exactly. Whatever it was. No, I heard it in a podcast about the, about the Holocaust, about Mengele. I was listening to that, and they this this you know, doctor just, just out Johnny, the while the world burns down, Mike. What is such apocalyptic times we can possibly think of? Instead of listening to some nice comedy or something that makes him feel good, no, let's listen to a biography of Mengele. Let's listen to the fucking horrific fucking depths of human depravity of which we look forward to. Once we fall into the throes of our fucking fascistic masters. Oh, dictator Trump, please take my sack and make it into a tobacco pouch. <laughs> fucking hell, Ben, why didn't you just watch something? Why didn't you watch like a fucking highlights of, of Blackburn? Oh, shit, because there isn't any. <laughs> I'll have you know there's been highlights on every night since the lockdown and the football season. Highlights from the 90s. From all matches, every every match we've won so for years, it's all been on there. Well, it's not many, then, is it? <laughs> it's all been on YouTube every night. There's a Rovers match on, on the Let's channel. Let's do some bloody facts, shall we? OK. Apparently, one in three UK workers would describe their job as utterly dull or soul-crushing. <laughs> I think that's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> The other half, that's fucking lucky half. Shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like my job and it still crushes my soul. Well, it's, it's, it's all dull and soul crushing. Let's face it. That's uh, life. It's all soul that's, crushing. That's capitalism, baby! 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm see for new shoes. They're so shiny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh-huh. That's the capitalism advert. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Cool. My soul is cursed, but my shoes are shiny. Uh, that's about right, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got no rights, but my car is shiny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, still, I, I fully believe that. I think it's that's as high as uh, the stats higher, to be fair. I've got a new computer, a thousand gigabytes of RAM, but I will never be a free man. Capitalism. Uh, capitalism. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, capitalism. Do, 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 do. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what, the song or capitalism? Bright, shiny trainers that light up at night. Super fast computers. I don't know. Yeah, you get the fucking gist. I hope that's the next Solar Warden song. Yeah. (laughs) Capitalism. (laughs) Capitalism, fuck yeah. (laughs) I've got no soul and I've got no rights. But I fall asleep to Netflix every night. Woo! (laughs) Capitalism, fuck yeah! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> my boss owns a yacht I only own a bike <laughs> well, that's There's a okay, capitalist but pig That stole my rights right. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way it is He's a pig I'm a maggot He looks at me and says What you can't this work this weekend Are you some kind of faggot yeah. <laughs> All right, should we um, move on to the next? <laughs> no, I'm, enjoying I'm, this. I'm not gay. I will go long every day. Sorry, I can't stop. <laughs> just like capitalism. I'm going to musical mode. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just an endless cog in an endless machine. <laughs> Turning, turning like a nightmare machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, I'm done. <laughs> Should we have a fact? <laughs> <laughs> the Incredible Hulk was originally grey, but printing yeah. press issues made him come out green. Yeah, I didn't know that. Well, no. I, I'll sort of question that at slight. He mm. definitely was grave, but I think it was a conscious decision to make him green because it just looked shit on the page. Uh, they they made the conscious decision to make him green because it did just sort of like he didn't look very impressive. Cause they didn't have maybe many. it was a printing press made him green and thought oh, that's better. Oh, that looks better. Possibly, yeah. Maybe it's a mixture of the two. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. He's alright. He's alright. Go on then, Mike. People who drink black coffee are more likely to be psychopaths. My mum? Shit. Dad? Explains everything. That explains both of us, Ben. (laughs) Oh, there we go then. We're not psychopaths, but we were raised by them. Yeah. Shit. I don't even drink coffee, so where does that put me? You are a psychopath. You're one of them people who never has hot drinks. Yeah. You don't even have tea? Nope. Fucking stay away from the small animals. <laughs> Psycho. <laughs> He's just asking if I wet the bed. Mike, he is proper. Served is wrong with people that don't have hot drinks. They're either immature or, like, just fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, which one am I? Uh, Both! Both. <laughs> I'm not immature. <laughs> <laughs> You're not immature, and I'm not a sexual deviant. <laughs> well, you are, yeah. Are you fucking immature? I'm not immature. Look, I'm going to get into some immature back and forth argument about who is the most mature, because it's definitely me. Uh, well, I disagree. 
I'll let the, the listener decide that one. Child. I'm not a child. <laughs> Come on, Mike, give us a fact. The single strong fixing that holds the body of a helicopter to its rotor is nicknamed the Jesus nut. Because <laughs> if the nut fails, Jesus is your only hope. I hope it doesn't fail that often, then. <laughs> no shit. Jesus, take my rotors. Yeah, I'm not down for that. A 1970 nature paper found that men's beards grow faster if they refrain from having sex. Fucking hell, I'm going to look like Gandalf in no time. <laughs> <laughs> that explains all 25 inches. I guess you become a wizard. <laughs> Sadly, no. <laughs> no, you know the real reason. It's in another dimension! <laughs> You're slightly hamstrung by your penis being in another dimension, though. Well, it is that. Uh, certainly is a handicap. It is. <laughs> well, factual information, Mike. The two highest paid YouTubers per video are four and six years old. Fuck's sake, little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Shitty little cunt. On average, most people have fewer friends than their friends have. This is known <laughs> as the friendship paradox. <laughs> I only know you two. Hey, my, brain's break, my brain's breaking a little bit, yeah. I mean, I know a few more, but not many. So, yeah, I guess... Well, there you go. Well, well, there you go. Fuck you, friend paradox. 390 light years away on the planet Wasp 76B, it rains liquid iron. I thought you were going to tell me about some kind of giant alien wasp then for a second. (laughs) And and it plays Iron Maiden fucking 24 7 Metal! Iron rain. <laughs> you definitely need some kind of hat to go outside, though, wouldn't you? In the iron rain, I wear my protective hat. <laughs> <laughs> outside, without that, I want the stupid sweat. <laughs> Send it in, guys. Send it to him. There you go. Writes itself. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Fantastic. Modern hard drives are so sensitive that even shouting at them can lower their performance and blasting a trumpet at one could cause it to fail completely. (laughs) (laughs) Hey! Oh, shit. I better start wanking so loudly for the... (laughs) (laughs) I'm about to blow that bastard to pieces. (laughs) Make a trumpet sound like a flea's fart. (laughs) (laughs) That can't be true. Yeah, man. They're sensitive. Do we know anyone who's got a trumpet? I'm sure we could look. Actually, yeah, I think I do. Fantastic. Let's see if we can borrow them and their trumpet. And I'll we'll buy... Can, we'll get a shitty laptop. No one's using well, it. How about I learn to play this trumpet? No, I'm not going oh. to fucking, not gonna fucking happen. I suppose, yeah, we're getting to play it. Right, have we got any more facts? So I'm going to yeah. be honest. I don't know if you noticed, I am drunk as fuck, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And I've got to go to bed soon. Right, I will have one more then. Go on then. Australian scientists have shown that sharks can correctly identify jazz music. <laughs> I think that's a bit better to do. <laughs> How can they correctly identify jazz? So they can differentiate between jazz and rock. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Jazz yeah, sends me into shit. a murderous rage. Yeah, jazz is shit. I'm going to be yeah. Yeah. Is, Isn't the animal cruelty playing jazz to animals to sharks? <laughs> that's why they keep People. Some mad scientist keeps playing jazz into the ocean. <laughs> Why? Why, humanity, uh, is your plastic not enough? <laughs> you uh, 
your jazz. <laughs> oh, give me a plastic <laughs> ring over the jazz for fuck's sake. <laughs> Isn't him like that scat like a type of jazz? I'm a scat man. That's it. Well, people would be do love, but isn't that jazz too? No, no. I've got a challenge for you guys. So, scat man, that was his big hit, yeah. Be ba 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 da bum ba 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 da bum. Yeah. Can you name his follow-up hit? Living in a scat man's world. Oh, you fucker! Have we done oh. this. Oh. You got it. How did it go? Come on, give me the chorus. I, I actually don't know. How it went. I used to know the chorus. Calling out from Scatland. Oh. Calling. From Scatman's world. Oh, yeah. If you want to break free, come on and listen to me. You gotta learn how to be with your family. Calling out from Scatland. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Scatland well, is not a theme park that I want to visit. <laughs> <laughs> you go Again. slides pretty quick, though, Mike. With all that lube, all that shitty lube. <laughs> scatty lube. <laughs> <laughs> it's got two meanings. This was such a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go on the log flume. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made that mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joke of the episode. <laughs> Don't go on the log flume. It's <laughs> Scatland. <laughs> 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 oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> That's why the English language is a bastard because there are multiple meanings to many words. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I remember at school, we in computer class, and we were researching universities and colleges, and the teacher was like, "Right, uh, we should type in scat." For Shrewsbury College of Art and Technology. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And I knew as soon as they said it, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scatland. <laughs> uh, Miss. Miss. <laughs> oh, God, it happened, Scatland. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that whenever Mike starts a sentence that starts with when I was in school, it usually ends up being about shit? <laughs> well, all it's my a anecdotes are. It's a shitty time for us all, Ben. No, we've had this bad <laughs> Yes, okay. Thank you for listening. I've been Ben. Don't do it in the favourite and don't join a cult. I have been Gaz. Good night, free Biff Tannen. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>